Okay, here's the 3D printed radio control version of the Mist Er robot. And uh, it was based on, I can show a little slideshow later, but it's based on a very inexpensive $6.29 uh, radio control car that I found on Amazon, which I gutted for the uh, transmitter, the receiver, and the uh, misting device. So basically, I can control the gears rotating in the chest and the arm thrusting action, the Mr. Hustler type action, and I can control the walking, and I can control the misting, which isn't going to show up well. It's misting quite well, but it's kind of hard to, to catch on the camera. And if I aim it right at the lens, I'll end up fogging up the lens. But in person, it's quite nice. It automatically uh, turns off after about 12, maybe 15 seconds. So if you want it on, you have to have to hit the button again. And you can hit the button any time to turn it off. Like I say, this one, doesn't matter where they push it up or down, is going to uh, control the gears. And the chest moving, expanding, whatever you want to call it. If you push the button the other way, then, then the gears run the other way. And it's going to be the same thing with the walking, except it's always going to walk forward no matter what. It's a very good walking robot. One change that I made since the uh, the first one, the one where I was just on a timer control, I went ahead and put ratchets on both the front and the rear wheels to make sure that they would grab well. And of course, in the back, there's your main uh, on-off switch. It's a standard... Uh, slides which I use in all my projects. The mounting holes are about 19 millimeters apart. And inside the battery door I've got three AA batteries. You can see the battery door is composed of three parts. You have this main door part. There's this slide part which then has a, a nipple that sticks out that I press this cap onto. So the sliding action is what locks it in. Like so. Uh, the electronics are up in the back of the head to refill the misting unit, which I put up here. There's this silicon rubber stopper you lift, and then you, it comes with a small uh, squeeze tube. In order to fill these uh, the best way, you don't want to hold it up and watch the drops go in. It traps hair and it's going to bubble over. Actually, push the little squeeze bulb all the way down to the bottom and then squeeze it. And when you see it getting ready to overflow, then if you release, it'll suck a little of the water back and you can lift it out. And of course, when you're done playing with it, use the same little squeeze bulb to suck all the water out so it isn't uh, just left in there. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to take you through a little build video where I took pictures while I was doing this. So let's, uh, let's get in here close. And right about there. Maybe I can zoom in a little bit more. So anyway, this is a picture of the toy. And I can put a link in the description down below. Only reason I'm focusing on this one is because it was the cheapest one I could find. And uh, this misting unit is a different shape than the uh, unit that I used on my first project. Where I had the smoke come out the mouth. This is better because the fill's on top of the head and everything's hidden. It's easier to get to. Of course, I end up cutting these uh, these fake fins off and just keeping just the misting unit. And there's two red LEDs in there, which there's some screws in the bottom I did. Took the LEDs out and ended up using them for the eyes in this uh, robot build. Also added a current limiting resistor since they only had a 10 ohm resistor on a red LED running on 4.5 volts. It was drawing way too much current. The LEDs were actually getting hot and it'd give you a very short battery life. So this is what the body is going to look like from the front. And I'm using the TT type gear motor. In this case the blue one which means it's got the metal gears in there. And it's uh, got the 90 to 1 gear ratio or 190 if you want to talk the way they like to. And um, see if I have a, you know, the two screw holes, I'm using them from the back side. When we get flip the picture around, 
there would have been two uh, 632 screws that I thread in from the battery box side to hold this uh, in place. So the battery box is already glued in in this picture, but if it wasn't, you would see two screws back there and it's designed so they flush mount in. They won't uh, get in the way of the battery box. And it's just your standard uh, three AA battery box which I glued in place. Here's the misting unit off the car when you cut those fake fins off and the LEDs would have been here and here. Like I say, I took them out so I could use them later for the eyes. The misting unit itself in this particular one has a plug on the end so you can actually unplug it from the circuit board. So there's a hole to run that wire down in there and then the uh, misting unit, you tip the uh, silver part in first and then it'll lay back. Then this top is going to go on the top. So it'll sit in there like that. And uh, what we're looking at here is the back of the head. See here's an ear. This is the top of the head. The front would have been on this side. In this case I uh, egged out this hole a little bit bigger. I think in the final file I just made the hole bigger so I could pass that plug through that I was telling you about. I'm going to put all the electronics back in here, the receiver board and all that kind of crap. This is the uh, shoulder piece and neck. I'm going to go ahead and put some glue on that and, and there's a recessed place in the bottom of the head so they actually almost snap together. Here's the uh, head top part. It's got uh, grooves on the bottom side to align it and just glue it down and that'll hold the misting unit in place. Here's what the uh, control board looks like. It's not real fancy. Um, this is going to be one of your motors. This is going to be your other motor. I mean this could be your chest for example and this could be your walk if you want. This black wire is going to end up having, um, I'm going to end up bringing the negative battery wire up and it's going to solder on there. And when I bring the positive battery wire up, it's going to solder on there. The uh, LEDs for the eyes, one of the, uh, the positive of the LED goes to here, which is your battery power. And then the negative ones where I added another resistor here, I put in, a, I think I put in a 220 ohm resistor. But anything from 100 ohms up to 470 ohms is going to light the LEDs up plenty bright without burning them out and give you a longer battery life. Um, here it is with the back of the head glued in place. I made a change. You can see there's a little bit of a, a gap there on the head and the back. I made a change to one of those two parts. I can't remember which one. I think the top. So that that'll come back and meet flush and there won't be that little stair step. Okay, so here we have the uh, working on the moving arm parts. It's called body sides, but this is what the arm's going to mount to. And... Uh, I bought one of those spring kits from Harbor Freight, but you can find them online where you get like 200 different spring sizes for five or six bucks, dirt cheap. So I fished, just fished around in there till I found some springs that I could loop on there. And then inside these uh, side pieces, these arm mounts, if you will, there are built in a place where you can loop the spring as well. That's to pull these in because we're going to put a cam on here, which is going to push them out. And there's the cam. So when that motor runs, the uh, arms flex in and out. Uh, here it is the front of the head. There's these red eye inserts which I printed in uh, translucent uh, PEG. Uh, if I'd had translucent PLA I would have used that because it's easier to print with. And of course the two LEDs that I told you about are there's holes in the backs of these parts are glued into those. I think I tried, yeah, I tried to shoot through the neck so you can actually see the back of one of the red ones Here's the LED super glued in place. The wires loop over. Both LEDs are wired in parallel. Now we're going back to the arm part. Here's this body side piece. I took a, a 632 screw and another spring from the spring kit and there's an inset place in this arm where that pushes in and we're going to screw it into this piece. Uh, narrow side towards this arm. So it goes in like that and screw it in nice and tight. That way you see you can move the arm without anything breaking. The spring will maintain tension. It's okay for the screw to stick out. In fact, that'll help you uh, when we go to glue the arm on to line it up. 
these uh, pieces down here are going to hinge just with a paper clip through them. In most of these pictures you'll just see the paper clip sticking in. In the end of course you trim the clip off and then where the clip comes through there's a little hole. I put a little dab of glue there and there so the paper clip won't slide out. Forms a hinge like that. And here you can actually kind of see the little paper clip right there. And that's where I would end up putting the dab of glue. And that's what it's going to look like when the uh, arms are on there. This is the extension piece to go from that motor to drive the uh, gear display on the chest. Here's the battery door. You already saw it in real life, so you don't really need these pictures. It's the uh, front of the body, and then this gear piece here. There's a place where you can print that gear piece any color you want and then glue it in. There's an indent so it'll self-align when you glue it. You don't have to worry about getting it. On the uh, legs, they print with this flat side down on the printer. So that means if you want this detail to be there, you print that out as a separate knee detail and put some glue on the back side and just glue it on and then the center piece and glue it in the center. And then your legs will look nice. Uh, here we are with the TT motor that's going to go down inside this leg. Here's a place for a screw, which will go into there. And this hole and that hole is where the 3mm uh, rod shaft is going to go through for the rear pivot. And here's a rod shaft stuck in there just to demonstrate. It also makes it easier to screw this in place if you have that on there. you got to make sure you've soldered some wires onto that motor before you stuff it down in there or you won't be able to get in there to uh, solder the wires on. Um, here is the crank pushed onto the motor shaft which you need to do at this point. This is the leg linkage piece which is going to go inside this front of this leg. And I guess what I'm showing in this picture is the axle that we're cutting for this leg linkage piece. It's just a smidgen under two and a half inches long. I think two and a half would be fine. So here you can see I've started it on that and this whole piece would slide all the way down in there. And what we're going to do is interface it with this crotch piece, which you can see there's a place where the switch will mount from the inside. There's some, there's the slot that this cam rides in here and a bigger hole that allows that cam to stick through to drive the other leg when it's all pushed together. Just like that. So that rod comes through this holes in the crotch piece. There's your linkage sting at the bottom. Here's your rear pivot point for the leg. And here's the cam sticking out for the other drive. And here's a view of it looking top down on it. Now we're getting ready to put on the right leg. That was the left leg that had the motor in it. And I've started the linkage piece. Then I'm going to take the leg and slide it up. And as the leg's going in, in place, push that the rest of the way on. Sort of like that. And when it's pushed in place then here are the uh, linkage pieces. They're flopped forward. Normally they would be clear up here in the back but you know gravity's flopping them forward. And again another top view so you can kind of see the linkage and the way that uh, three millimeter rod is in there. Here I'm putting a, a screw. This is the hip piece it slides on once you've got all of that stuff in place. There's a place for a screw in the front and a screw in the back. And then you feed a three millimeter shaft all the way through the hip, through the leg, through the crotch, through the other leg, and out the other hip. And that provides the rear pivot for the leg pieces. And this is the back side showing where the switch would stick out. It mounts from the inside and the screws go in there. There's the screw holding it. It's just a number two uh, self-tapping screw. And again a picture from the top. And here I am with the switch. I've taken the red wire from the battery box that's glued in there, just soldered it to the end of one of the contacts on the switch, and I took another piece of red wire and soldered it to the other contact on the switch. And by holding onto the wires and fishing it up in there you can then screw it in place so it should look something like this at this point, where I've got um, the wires coming off for the chest piece. 
I've got the wires coming up, which you can't see back there, coming from the motor in there, and the red wire and the black wire from the battery box, which is already at the top, all sticking out the top. And here I haven't trimmed the paper clips yet off, but you can see where they're pushed through for the pivot on the arm part. Just another view showing the wires coming out. Same thing here, now that we've got the cam on, it makes it a little harder to see it. And we've got the uh, extension piece pushed in for the gears on the front. View from the top. And here we have the head laying, just laying in place so I could bring the wires up through the neck and poke various wires through these holes that I provided in the back of the head so that we can solder them onto the uh, control board. All the extra wires, because we want to leave it kind of extra long to make the build easy, can be crammed up inside this head. There's nothing in this lower part of the head. So we can just, once we get the board in place, just jam all those wires up in there. And it'll look like that, more or less, depending on how you like to solder your wires on. I took the uh, antenna wire, which is this white one, just poked it through the hole, brought it up inside the head, and it's got a piece of foil and just stuck the foil, they're using the foil to help the antenna work, stuck the foil to the inside of the head. So on here, this already has the chest ring in place. This outside piece is a separate gear ring, and I cut a piece of plastic off a, a blister pack, something I, I think I bought at Costco or someplace, was, had a clear plastic uh, blister cap on it. So I just cut a circle, put it in there, and then glued this ring down over the top of that ring. These gears, of course, you want to just space out so they're not going to bump into each other. The one in the middle, which they call the sun gear, has got a post on the end, and you just jam it down into that extension tube that you saw earlier. Now we're down with the uh, ratchet wheels. They're all the same, so you don't have to worry about a forward and a backward on them. And the rubber O-rings are from one of those O-ring kits, like I said, from Harbor Freight. I've used in all my projects where you just get all these different sizes of little rubber O-rings. And uh, got the shaft. The trick about the shaft is you just need to cut um, six shafts for each foot that could fit inside, side to side. Because once they're in there and we bring the top of the foot down, it'll keep the shafts from moving. So it'll be like self-locking. Now you'll notice that the front ratchet and the rear ratchet are different, so you don't want to get those confused. And you have to make sure that they move completely freely on their shaft, otherwise gravity won't let them drop down in and, and do their job. I know black on black is hard to see, but here's the rear ratchet. And pinned, here's the front ratchet. And here I'm getting ready to attach it, so I bring it up and I'm going to pin these, these two holes right here, these two holes right here. Pin it on the rear first. Make sure you put the foot on the leg first or you won't be able to get it on there later. And you run the pin all the way through. Then this pin goes through and catches that leg linkage piece. Goes all the way through. Then when you're done you can just... Right now I haven't even glued these uh, feet down. They, I just snapped them down. But I will glue them down in the end. I just didn't know if I need to get in there again for... Uh, pictures for this video or not. So that's pretty much it. I'll have the files. Let's see if I can get back far enough to get the robot in the picture again. I'll have the files up on uh, Thingiverse in case you want to build it. I'll have a link to that uh, Amazon and look at that puppy go. Here let's get some smoke going too. You can get everything going at once if you want. Let's turn the smoke off. Let's turn it back on. Let's get the gears going and let's watch. There you have it.